Hello, everybody. I am here to talk about trademark and copyright infringement. And I have written a couple of posts about this on my blog um, that have actually gained some pretty decent traction, um, which you can find here at shootingstarsvg.com. And you just go click up my blogs and you'll see that there. Um, and basically talks about things you want to avoid when you are designing your graphics and this can get a little out of hand sometimes because people think that if you go onto Google and you search an image that you know it's theirs and anybody can use it and that's not the case um, you can get in a lot of trouble for this I'm really just trying to protect everybody and give you some guidelines I guess and some things to go based off of because when I first started out I mean I was I had no idea what I was doing so I was doing NFL stuff and uh, you know Batman and um, sports teams and Disney and all of these things and then somebody was kind enough to educate me and say hey you know you're actually infringing on a trademark somebody can come and you know take legal action against you for this even though you're just a small business owner and I wasn't having any part of that I'm an ethical person I try to do the right thing um, you know I've learned from those mistakes and I'm trying to educate the masses on things that they can do to not be put in that same position um, this post that I put up the other day really kind of came around this viral Facebook post that was going around the crafting community where this lady was selling this Chanel jewelry and I got a little bit more information after I put this post up in one of the groups but I guess she had a few cease and desist letters before she got this final notification but basically you know somebody from their company came into her home purchased some of this counterfeit Chanel knockoff jewelry and now they're taking legal action and having her go through and give up this stuff that she had either purchased or created and the thing that blew my mind is that when you look at the last picture here basically if she wasn't gonna con comply with this she was going to have to take care of all of their legal fees and everything of that nature and plus you know there was some other uh, other things that they were gonna charge her for and I'm like I don't even make you know that much in a year so it's like I couldn't afford as a single mom getting my tiny shop shut down because I'm not complying with the law and everybody thinks oh there's so many people I mean I'm just gonna go on Etsy right now um, that are doing this if you type in Disney SVG right look at all this stuff that pops up we have over 33,000 search results and so everybody has this thing oh you know everybody is doing it it'll never happen to me Etsy shuts these shops down all the time they will find you they can take legal action and people trust me when I say they do not screw around you may be small but they'll figure it out eventually and it's really not that worth it I get more joy out of creating something that's original versus you know pulling apart somebody else's don't get me wrong I do have things up on my shop that um, I use different uh, clip art graphics for because I am not that artistic but there are a lot of things that I have created myself um, it's all about taking the time to learn um, I think the thing that I'm probably most proud of is this monster mash graphic uh, it took me uh, 
It took me a little time to get these faces the way I wanted them to be, but I think they're really cute, and it's my style, and I, I just like the way they turned out. I get more enjoyment from that, and then being able to provide that for people and seeing them wearing my work is, it's just a good feeling. So I want to give you some ideas as far as how you can go about um, protecting yourself and making sure you're not falling trapped to this mindset of, yeah, this can never happen to me. Uh, I do save all of my files in, in certain folders. Um, I have a external hard drive that I save everything to um, with a business folder, and I have a digital downloads purchased. And I know all my st I know my licensing on design bundles, and a lot of these are commercial use. Most of these are mockups and things of that nature for my actual physical um, products and SVGs. But um, I make sure that I save everything based off of license type, and that's including my fonts because I do have some fonts that are only for personal use. Um, so you have to be careful about that too. Uh, I made the mistake of creating a design that actually used the entire font alphabet of somebody's font. And even though I had a commercial use license, I had only changed out one letter and put a graphic in in place of the letter. And the owner of that font had sent me a message and said, hey, I don't know if you read the license of your my font, but you can't. This design is no good. And she was really cool about it. I took the design down right away. You just really want to be careful. Um, I'm going to post this Google Doc in the um, description of this. Um, Missy Mayer is a fantastic font creator. I'm actually going to go ahead and plug her shop because it's just really she's just really that good. Um, and I love her fonts. I use them in a lot of my work. Uh, she does have a lot of different fonts that uh, she's created and she kind of has like a fun and quirky style and I really just I don't know, I love her stuff so you come to design bundles and support her I'll drop her link um, down below and she's always been really helpful with the trademark and copyright stuff I learned a lot from her um, and as you can see she has a lot of different fonts she does really really great work she was kind enough to create this spreadsheet that she's always updating with uh, Class 25 trademark. And Class 25 trademark is um, specific to clothing. And I believe in my last blog post I did talk about the different classes and how you can find out what those are. And there's a link to it in my blog. And basically this post that somebody had put together, which is a ton of information, goes through all of the different classes. So you have to keep in mind who our end customer is. If you're creating files for, you know, uh, glasses, beer mugs, or coffee mugs, then if you look at housewares in glass, um, you want to make sure that there's no class 21 um, trademark against it. Uh, a lot of our stuff goes on clothing, so you want to make sure that it doesn't have a class 25 trademark. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we get into uh, tests, which is the search engine for trademarks. And even, you know, um, you just want to be careful, like leather goods and other things like that. I mean, there's just a ton of different things in here. If you think that they're going to take your file and use it towards a different class outside of class 25, and you want to make sure you're checking the trademark, okay? So it's a pain in the butt, but if you want to protect yourself, you'll take it seriously. I mean, I have a notebook full of things that I write down, design ideas that I'd like to, you know, check out and and create something around. Um, but I always run them through the tests before I even start designing because I just don't want to waste my time. I've done too many of those, um, and they're constantly changing. One thing I like about design bundles is they will, they're constantly scrubbing their website, um, unlike Etsy. So 
they take down any of our listings that have a trademark infringement. Um, for example, I had um, the All American Girl file taken down maybe a month ago because there was a trademark that was in and then I actually didn't know that baby bear was trademarked and I had a baby bear file up there for 4th of July and that was taken down. So anytime they take something down on design bundles I go back and take it down off of Etsy. Um, I actually still have to take a couple of files down. Uh, I haven't had the opportunity to but uh, that's enough of me rambling on. I've been rambling for 10 minutes so let's get right to it. Um, this is the uh, United States Patent and Trademark Office website, USPTO.gov. Um, I don't have this one bookmarked, but if you go click on the trademarks menu search, um, it gives you a ton of information that you can read about. Um, for the purpose of this, though, we're just going to want to scroll down and go to the search, the trademark database. And again, this is, they call it TESS, it's Trademark Electronic Search System. Okay. And it's really not that um, complicated to perform one of these searches. I thought that I had this bookmark, but I guess I didn't. And um, I always just go into the basic word mark search, okay? Here's something that's important to note. You have plural and singular. I usually have both because I don't, if I'm typing in like um, onesie, which we'll go through. Because that I know that one is a trademark, then it will pick up onesies, or if, vice versa. If you type in onesies, it will pick up onesie. Live and dead means if it is a dead trademark, that means it's not registered anymore. And if it's live, it is. So we want to do, we want to make sure we're looking at just live, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and type in onesie because that's what we were just talking about. I know that this is trademarked by Gerber. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And you can see here that there's six search results and one of them does not have a registration number. That means this one is not live. This is specific to um, all these different classes and goods and services. And it does have a class of 25, which is clothing. Um, they will find you. I've heard horror stories about Gerber. I actually had some listings on Etsy that I had changed all my words of onesies, and there may be some still kicking around, to baby bodysuit or crawler because I don't want anything to do with it. So you can see when you click on the second record, this is registered, and it is registered onesies, and it is a class 25 standard character mark. That means if you type that out in any font, in any way, shape, or form, if you put it in your tag, if you put it in your title, Gerber can come after you and say, hey, I want to know how many times you sold this and how much money you made because you could be uh, varnishing our name, basically. Um, I think what people need to understand is that a lot of people abuse this. Um, there is a trademark watchdogs group on Facebook. I'm going to try to pull it up and I put a link to that in um, one of the blog posts on copyright. But these guys are great. I mean there's a, a large community of us and basically people are filing LOPs against single word trademarks and ridiculous trademarks that are out there on commonly used phrases. Uh, so, you know, like here's one, this girl Amber filed an LOP, which is a letter of protest that basically said, Hey, I am loved should not be trademarked. This does not identify a brand. This does not meet the definition of what a trademark should be. And this needs to be removed because um, it's a common phrase, just like some of these ones in, in Missy's list. I mean, how can somebody have the word boy as a class 25 trademark? And I mean, these single word trademarks, uh, they just really blow my mind. Thankful. 
Let's go look that one up real quick, okay? Of course, it comes up with 37 results, but if you scroll down, there's three here. And this is, um, let's see if I can find the one that, here it is, clothing, standard character mark, and it looks like it was an Australian company that had filed the trademark on this, and it is live. It has an active uh, register, and they have published it for opposition. Somebody did file an LOP on this. I mean, you, you think of anything like you can think of. Um, I think Alicia mentioned in her video the other day, super glue. Um, th there's just certain things that, like, you know, you think about Ziploc is one. Um, plastic bags, right? And you think of some things like Xerox, right? Xerox like took over. Xerox has a bunch of trademarks out there because that's their brand. So you want to just be careful when you're doing these things. And look, we've got Baby Bear up on the list here. Um, you know, Boss Mom. I think somebody mentioned Mom Boss. I would like to note that there is three Boss Moms here. And this is for a class 16 and 21, 35, and 41. And this boss mom, okay, is a standard character mark. Interestingly enough, um, this looks like an individual and I don't know why they even filed it because it doesn't look like they have a business to say, hey, this is my brand and this is why I'm filing it. Usually you do. Um, and then these other ones, they do not have register marks to them. So that means they are not reviewed and final. So keep in mind before you go and do any of that, you can go ahead and do a search for whatever you're trying to do, okay? And just, you know, I would take this Google Doc and copy it, put it somewhere on your computer, um, and just kind of go from there. Um, just be careful. Protect yourself. If you have any questions, like, just feel free to comment on this video. Um, I can help you if you don't understand or can't seem to find something in tests. Um, if you find any ridiculous trademarks, please comment below and let me know what they are because I can get them into this trademark watchdogs dogs list. There's lists here that they, they have and I will go, um, have them file LOPs against them. Anything we can do to help ourselves because it is becoming increasingly more difficult as people are filing these ridiculous trademarks and we just can't seem to keep any files up without violating one. So, um, like I said, if you have any questions below, please let me know. Um, you can comment below. You can send me an email through my website. You can contact me on Facebook. Um, whatever is easiest for you. And I hope that some of this helped. I know sometimes it can be a little overwhelming when you're first starting out, but you know, these are important things that you need to consider before you start populating your shops because you can get shut down. And if you get shut down, you can't come back up again. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you'd like to see more updates, click the subscribe button down below and I will talk to you guys soon.